Let's look at this nice sum of reciprocals of infinitely nested radicals. And this comes from the Math Gazette in 1997. Okay, so our goal is the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over one plus n times the square root of one plus n plus one times the square root of one plus n plus two times the square root of one plus, and then, well, I think you can see the pattern from there. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do is put this one inside of another square root, just so that we have like a similar structure to all of this. So, and then we're gonna set that equal to a sub n, capital A sub n. So in other words, a sub n is the square root of one plus n times the square root of one plus n plus one times the square root of one plus, and so on and so forth. But that means our goal is the sum of the reciprocal of the squares of this sequence a sub n. Let's also notice that we can pretty easily build a nice recursion for this sequence a sub n. So let's notice, for instance, a sub one is the square root of one plus one times the square root of one plus two times the square root of one plus three and so on and so forth. But notice if we were to truncate this off after the first step, we would have one plus two times the square root of uh, three, one plus two times the square root of one plus three and so on and so forth, which is in fact a sub two, but that's inside of this square root of one plus. So we have this is the square root of one plus a sub two. And then, well, Similarly, we can show that a sub two is equal to the square root of one plus two times a sub three, and then so on and so forth. And in general, we'll have a sub n is equal to the square root of one plus n times a sub n plus one. And that's actually gonna be quite a helpful recursion whenever we get around to kind of the final bit right here. But notice before we can really get around to that, we'd like to determine some nice formula for this a sub n sequence. Perhaps since we have a recursion, we'll see if we can find a formula for a sub one. So let's say that that's what we wanna do right now. That's like our little sub goal. And that is, well, like I said, determine what a sub one is. Okay. So how can we do that? Well, I'm gonna define a sequence that converges, well, if it converges, to this infinitely nested radical, because that's really what we mean by the infinite, infinitely nested radical. So let's define this sequence right here. I'll call it little a sub k. And it's gonna look like this. So it'll be the square root of one plus one times the square root of one plus two times the square root of one plus three times the square root of one, so on and so forth, until we end up at this kth step right here. So in other words, it's gonna be something like one plus k minus one times the square root of one plus k. And then we're truncating it at that position. Okay, so let's send all of those off. So it's still nested in terms of nested radicals, but it's not infinitely nested. Okay, so next up what I'm gonna do is define a companion sequence B sub K. And this companion sequence is gonna be almost exactly the same, except for this K plus one at the end will not be inside of a square root. So it's the square root of one plus one times the square root of one plus two times the square root of one plus, and so on and so forth. And like I said, out here at the kind of very end, we'll have one plus k minus one times k plus one. Yeah, and just to point out, that's inside of a radical. Okay, cool. So let's send those over because now that is infinitely nested. Okay. And now I'm gonna make like a little observation and the observation will be this. 
Observe that if we take a sub k over b sub k, we get a number that is less than 1. And that's because the only thing that a sub k and b sub k differ by is the fact that a sub k has this 1 plus k term in a square root at the very end of its nesting. But that's, of course, going to decrease its value. But that means, well, that b sub k is bigger than a sub k, which means if you take their quotient, you get something less than 1. Okay, and then the next thing that we'll prove, which will prove this, is that b sub k is always equal to 2. So this is true for all k bigger than or equal to 2. But notice that immediately following from that, we see that a sub k over 2 is less than 1. Just because, well, that's just a restatement of the inequality right here. Okay, so let's maybe look at the proof of this portion first. And then we'll use this to find the limit of the a sub k terms. Oh, and just, I think I said this in words, but I'd like to point out here that a sub k, if it converges, will converge to a sub 1, because that'll turn this finitely nested radical into an infinitely nested radical. That's maybe not a super careful way to say it, but that's like maybe close enough. Okay, so we're proving this magenta underlined stuff. Okay, so let's look at b sub 2 first and observe that that ends up being the square root of 1 plus 2 minus 1 times 2 plus 1, because that's our step right there. But that's pretty clearly equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Okay, but next up what we'll do is take this right here, expand it out, see that we get k squared minus 1, and then we have a plus 1. So this ends up being k squared. And then let's also observe that we know that this is attached to a k, let's see, a k minus 2. And furthermore, it's attached to a uh, 1 plus before it. So that means that we could really take this b sub k and write it with those simplifications. So that's the square root of 1 plus 1 times the square root of uh, 1 plus 2 times the square root of ending up here at the square root of 1 plus k minus 2 times the square root of k squared. But that's k minus 2 times k. In other words, it's going to be 1 plus k minus 2 times k. But that's exactly our bk sequence where we switch out a k with a k minus 1. So that means we have bk is the same thing as bk minus 1. But of course that's going to be the same thing as bk minus 2, bk minus 3, all the way down until you get this is equal to b2 which we just showed was equal to 2. Okay so that wraps up this magenta underlined little observation. Now, let's use this to find a sub 1. In other words, the limit of the ak sequence. But in fact, in order to do that, we're going to need a little limit as a tool. So let's look at that. OK, so let's look at this inequality lemma. So we'll show that if we have positive numbers x, y, and b, then the square root of 1 plus bx over 1 plus by is strictly bigger than the square root of x over y, if and only if y is bigger than x. Okay, so let's see how we might do this. So I'm going to transpose down this 1 plus bx over 1 plus by bigger than the square root of x over y, and then we'll just make a bunch of kind of obvious if and only if statements. So observe that that is equivalent to the same inequality with no squares. So 1 plus bx over 1 plus by is bigger than x over y. But then that's going to be equivalent to what we get after cross multiplying. Remember everything's positive so cross multiplying will not change the direction of the inequality. So that's going to be y plus bxy is bigger than x plus bxy. 
Oh, but now let's observe that those BXY terms kind of very, very quickly cancel, and we're left with Y is bigger than X. Okay, so now that we've made this nice observation about our AK sequence and our companion BK sequence, and we've got this inequality preparation, let's head into this uh, proof of, well, the value of a sub 1. Okay, so now we're looking for a sub 1. In other words, we're looking for the limit of the a k sequence. So let's start with a k over 2, which earlier we argued that that was less than 1. But now let's notice that that's going to be equal to a k over b k, which is equal to the square root of, well, let's see, we have 1 plus... Uh, 1 times the square root of 1 plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus 3 times the square root of 1 plus all the way up to k minus 1 times the square root of k plus 1. So observe what I did there is I just rewrote the a sub k thing. Keeping in mind that I'm taking this outer square root and I'm simply like kind of factoring it out of the fraction, if you will. Okay, and then let's see the denominator is 1 plus 1 times the square root of 1 plus 2 times the square root of 1 plus 3, and then uh, times the square root of 1 plus, ending at k minus 1 times k plus 1. Okay, so now let's maybe use our previous lemma to get rid of all of these one pluses that we have. So notice we've got a one plus here and a one plus here. So in fact, we can remove those if we add an additional square root to what's left. But that's gonna turn this square root into a fourth root. And then we can essentially just do this over and over and over again because we can apply that previous lemma. So now we can get rid of this square root and this square root and the one plus and uh, change this square root into an eighth root. I guess it's a fourth root into an eighth root. And then the twos will cancel and we can keep doing it over and over and over again. And, well, that's going to not give us an equality, but that's going to push the inequality down to this very last step where we've got two things that are different, this square root of k plus 1 over k plus 1. And so we'll end up with that, k plus 1 and k plus 1, the numerator 1 in the square root. But now we've applied this lemma k times. So if we applied this lemma k times, then that means all of this is raised to the power 1 over 2 to the k. And now, well, this is a limit that, notice that the argument of the exponentiation is approaching 1. And then, well, the exponent is approaching 0 as k is approaching infinity. But that's pushing everything towards the whole limit being 1. So let's see, that means that this limit is equal to 1. But notice that by the squeeze theorem, that tells us that the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k is equal to 2. Because well, what we just showed is that the limit of a sub k over 2 is equal to 1. But that tells us that a sub 1, which was that limit, is equal to 2. Okay. So now we know what a sub 1 is, and at this point what we can do is determine all of the other values of this capital A sequence. Okay, so let's get around to that. So we just finished showing that a sub 1 was equal to 2, but now let's observe that earlier we showed that a sub 1 was the square root of 1 plus a sub 2. But now squaring both sides, we see that 4 is equal to 1 plus a sub 2, in other words, a sub 2 is equal to 3. Now, let's do one more. So we know that 3 is equal to a sub 2, but that's the same thing as the square root of 1 plus 2 times a sub 3 by our previous observation. But then squaring both sides, we have 9 
is equal to one plus two times a sub three, but pretty quickly we see that a sub three is equal to four. And I think that's probably enough data to make the following claim about the value of a sub n. So it seems like a sub n is equal to n plus one. And so now let's prove this claim and we can do a nice simple proof of this claim using induction. So observe that the base case is taken care of when we determined a sub one, but then we did a couple of like bonus base cases as well in order to come up with this claim. So now let's suppose for some value of k, we have a sub k is equal to k plus one. Okay, but then that means that k plus one is the same thing as a sub k, which in turn is equal to the square root of one plus k times a k plus one. Applying this recursion rule over here. Now squaring both sides, we see that k squared plus two k plus one is equal to one plus k times a k plus one. Now from here, we can cancel the ones from both sides and then divide both sides by k and we'll see that a k plus one is equal to k plus two. Okay, so, but that's exactly what we needed to finish off this induction proof. But at this stage, we know all of the values of a sub k. So that means we know all of these denominators, which means, well, we can calculate the value of our sum. So notice that it collapses to the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n plus one squared. Which observe by a little bit of re-indexing, that's gonna be the same thing as the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared minus one. Because, well, we differ by the sum of all of the reciprocals of the square simply by the first one, given the fact that we start with a1 is equal to two. But then this is the well-known Basel problem. We know that that sum is equal to pi squared over six, meaning our final value is pi squared over six minus one.